five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with another hopefully exciting episode of a Shaggy Life podcast. Uh, sorry I didn't get a podcast episode done last week. I was going to do one kind of related to Survivor and it wasn't going exactly the way that I wanted it to, so I kind of abandoned it and then it was too late to get another episode on. And so I uh, appreciate you guys checking in and listening. If you're listening on your favorite podcasting uh, app or platform, don't forget you guys can go over to YouTube and look at the Curtis Tucker channel. I'm waving at you. You guys can watch me do the episode there. Right here in Shaggy Duck Studio, you can see the happy face. You can see the albums behind me. You can see all my funky 70s stuff here, but in Shaggy Duck Studio. If you guys are watching me on the YouTube channel, don't forget if there's sometimes that you can't catch me on the YouTube channel and you just want to listen in your car, you guys can catch me on all of the uh, major podcasting apps. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, eventually, if I get enough subscribers and enough hours to listen to, I can start earning money, but I've really got to get that cranking. And then also subscribe to the podcast on whatever app you have. And that way it also uh, helps me there. And then it lets you guys know every time I release a new episode. And since I am a little scattered right now, uh, you never know when that's going to be. But uh, appreciate you guys being here uh, today, tonight, this evening, this morning, this afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. And uh, it's going to be kind of a, I don't know, kind of a weird episode, I guess. It's going to be a mix of things. And for some of you that aren't into uh, this subject matter, uh, just listen anyway, because uh, it's full of stories of why I have begun gun to kind of start putting more faith into some of this crazy stuff. And so if you've been following me at all on Facebook or my podcast or stuff, you, you know, I kind of, a lot of times I use the word vibes and manifesting and things like that. And so, uh, the, you know, the more science comes out and the more that I read and the more that I learn, um, we are finding out that, of course, we're all made up of these tiny little moving pieces, you know, within our atoms and everything, and everything's moving. And so we all actually do have a vibe. Everything around you is vibrating and has a vibe. And so it only makes sense that if you have a certain vibe, that you would think that vibe would attract similar vibes. And so if you have a high vibration or I guess what we could would consider like maybe a happy vibration, you would think that that would connect with other high vibes or people with the same uh, vibration. But anyway, that's kind of the way. This is not an episode about um, vibrations, but it is about, uh, if you go to curtistucker.com, the blog post is called Winks, Wink, 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 Winks from the Universe. And what I decided to do is I had so many crazy synchronicities. So basically, you kind of have to look up the, the differences between a synchronicity and a coincidence. There are some people that say there are no such things as coincidences and they are actually all synchronicities. And so this is kind of, and so what I decided to do was since so many wild synchronicities were happening to me, I thought, well, let me document one year's worth of synchronicities on the blog and at the end of the year kind of see you know, what happened. And so these are kind of a combination of just flat out synchronicities. And then some of them are manifestations, things that I manifest. And something happened yesterday that really got me going. And I thought, well, this is the perfect time to talk about what happened yesterday and uh, talk about manifesting and winks from the universe and synchronicity. And so if you do not believe in all of that, um, that's fine. Um, there, I can't tell you what causes these things to happen, but I'm going to tell you my stories, the things that have happened this year, and then a few things from the past that I think were synchronicities and winks from the universe. And once you guys hear all that, then maybe you'll uh, realize that you've got your own stories. And I think what happens is, especially with like vibration and manifesting and positivity is, I think the more that you think about it and the more that you talk about it, the more that it happens to you just because you're making it happen. You're, that's what you're setting out to do. So if these synchronicities are no more than 
coincidences, they are coincidences because I am putting things out there causing them to happen. Now, what that is that makes some of these really wild things happen, I don't know. I can't explain that. But I just know that within the last couple of years, the more I have manifested, the more things have come true that I have manifested. And so, so Winks from the Universe is the name of the blog post, and it, it's basically talking about synchronicity. And here are a couple of uh, kind of definitions of synchronicity. Uh, synchronicity suggests that there is more to the world than what can be seen with our physical senses and that the universe can communicate with us through intuition, feelings, signs, and coincidences. Carl Jung believed that one's thoughts and feelings have the power to affect the course of one's life. And so, you know, so there, there, there's those things that happen to, the, to you that you're like, there's no way that could have happened. What, what are the odds of that ever happening? And if a lot of those things happen to you, those could be synchronicities. And, and if you don't even pay attention to them, maybe they're happening to you. And because you've never thought about it, like me, I hadn't really ever thought about it. Um, maybe they're happening to you. And now that you listen to this episode, maybe you're going to start paying attention. So start writing things down that you think are more than a coincidence that they could be a synchronicity and uh, check that out. And here's another definition. Synchronicity is a phenomenon in which people interpret two separate and seemingly unrelated experiences as, a, as being meaningfully intertwined even though there was no evidence that one led to the other or that the two events are linked in the other casual way. So basically, it's just saying that what are the odds that two things happen that synchronize and is probably a benefit for you? What, you know, what are the odds? And so um, if the odds are so astronomical that it could probably never happen in a million years, then that's the universe winking at you and uh, giving you a synchronicity. So what I've been doing is I've been tracking some stuff on this blog post just for 2024. I'm going to read off a couple of those. Some of those you've heard a little bit in prior episodes. Um, and then I'm going to go back and talk about some manifesting and some synchronicities that have happened in my life. And you guys listen to these stories and you guys tell me, you know, what are the odds? What do you think? Do you think that's just pure coincidence or whatever? So the first synchronicity that happened um, was at the beginning of the year in January. So again, like I said, I, I started this post, so I, then I started looking for what kind of cool little synchronicities uh, might be out there. So we were going to uh, Florida, Orlando, Florida in January, and we had to get up really early and drive to Oklahoma City. So Oklahoma City is basically, uh, the airport in Oklahoma City is two hours away from Enid, Oklahoma. And so uh, we drove down to Will Rogers Airport and we got there and um, I don't know, it was like, it was 4.30 a.m. in the morning. So we're sitting there in the airport, um, you know, you got to stay awake because you're getting ready to board the plane. So I get on social media and uh, I do one of my morning posts. And so I do a morning post and I take a picture, I think I held the camera up and took a, a selfie of myself sitting in the airport and then made some comment about like, um, you know, going on an adventure at 4.30 in the morning. And so then I posted it. And then I sat there and I was kind of reading through Facebook and some other stuff. And uh, just, you know, five, 10 minutes later, a lady walks up beside me and she says, hey, hey, Curtis. Um, and I said, oh, hi. I, I didn't recognize her, didn't know who she was. And she said, uh, I am follow you on Facebook and we're friends on Facebook. And I just notice that you posted on Facebook. And when I looked at the post, I could tell that the lady in the background of your photo was the lady that was facing me in the airport. So this late, so I was sitting in a chair, took a selfie. The lady behind me was kind of in the picture. And then the lady across from her recognized that lady in the photo in Will Rogers Airport and just happened to be checking her Facebook and my post popped up right there. So 
coincidence, synchronicity. Now, it didn't lead to anything. It didn't lead to, you know, me and this lady becoming best friends or getting a job or, you know, any of that. But just uh, just was kind of, that was one of the first uh, synchronicities of the year. So I, I jotted that one down. So then later um, we went to San Antonio and this was the story about where, um, we were by the Alamo and this monk guy walked up to me and had these bracelets and I've actually got, still got them on right here. So if, if you're watching the video, you can see it's these two beaded ones. And so he basically, uh, put them out and w was going to put them on my arm. And I thought, oh, wow, two free bracelets. How cool is that? So, um, he put one on my wrist, and again, I've, I've got this story, I think, on the blog, but and so I'll, I'll go through it really quick, but um, eventually put the other one on, said it was for my wife, uh, opened up a book, and it kind of had a suggestion of what all these other people had paid, like 30 and 40 and $45, and I reached into my pocket and I said, I got $5, and um, he kind of looked at me and I said, Five dollars, take it or leave it. So he took my five dollars and he shuffled off. And so I got both of these uh, bracelets for five dollars. Well, you couldn't go into a store or order these online for five dollars. So I got quite a deal. So we went through the day, ended up, I can't remember if it was that exact same night or maybe the next night, but one of the nights after we ended up at a random bar, uh, stopped to have drinks and it, was, it got late. And so Denise and I were sitting there and the only place to really sit was at this table that was kind of connected to a bigger table, um, but we were just kind of keeping to ourselves at one end of it, which left room for other people to sit at the other end. So these four people came and sat down at the other end of the table. We didn't know them, and uh, they were over there kind of laughing, having a good time, and uh, they, we could tell, so we were in San Antonio, but we could tell, I think they had shirts on, and, and we were down there for the Alamo Bowl, and we could tell that they were from Oklahoma. And so my, every now and then my wife would talk to uh, one of the husbands and, you know, just comment back and forth. And, and so uh, kind of the evening went on and then all of a sudden, uh, I think the, his, the, that guy's wife was sitting across from him and kind of across catty corner from me. And she had on a long shirt, but she, she kind of reached out. And when she reached out, I could see this bracelet. No, I could actually see this bracelet on her arm. And I started laughing and I looked at her and I stood up and I think I might've had long sleeves on. I think it was a little cool. And so I lifted up my arm and I showed her my beads and she saw my beads and she started laughing. And so we both started laughing. So she had gotten hit up by one of the monks. And I said, what did he get you for? And she uh, started laughing. And I think she said, let me see if I've got this down. Um, she said 20, I think she said $20. Um, so basically she had paid the monk $20 and she said, what did he get you for? And I started laughing really loud and I said, $5. And she said, oh man. And she looked at the other girl. Well, the other girl had also gotten stopped by monk, but she had paid the guy $45. So she looked down and said, you got those for $5. And I said, yeah. And so anyway, it was just kind of one of those wild synchronicities of, Normally, I wouldn't, you know, if, if it was somebody homeless and they were passing out pamphlets or selling bracelets, I'd normally uh, just walk on by. But this guy was dressed as a monk. I thought it was kind of a kind of a cool little deal. He, I doubt he was a monk, um, but he was Oriental. But I don't know. It was, there was just something about the way that it happened and that I wanted luck and um, that I, it was just, think of the synchronicity of me randomly by the Alamo, getting the bracelets, ending up at a bar, lady, her sleeve coming up, me seeing the bracelet. And then, um, then on the flight home, um, I actually had the bracelets on my other arm. Uh, on the flight home, I would put my arm up and put my uh, chin on my hand and I would fall asleep. And it was a couple of hours flight to get back. Or maybe, no, this was on another, this was on another trip, the, the Florida trip, I, we were flying back and I had the bracelets and I think maybe I've got those, 
I don't know, I don't have those in exact order. But anyway, so we were flying back from the Florida trip, and eventually after I'd waken up, woken up, this guy kind of said something to me. And so I look back and he says, um, he said, Hey, where'd you get those bracelets? And, and I kind of laughed and I said, I got them in San Antonio and he lifted up his wrist and he had on the bracelet. Well, they had been, I think in new Orleans, same thing. A monk had come up to them. He had gotten the bracelets from a monk in San Antonio, but it was just, so, you know, everybody in that bar did not have on the bracelets. Everybody on that plane did not have on the bracelets, but the people that were within my vicinity had on the bracelets and caused us to have a conversation. So that's just another one of the synchronicities that, uh, that that's a double synchronicity that happened this year. Um, so, um, so like I said, I'm also going to talk about manifesting. If you don't believe in manifesting, you should try it and see if it works. Um, and it, it has worked for me for, uh, s several years now. Uh, so basically every morning when I go out on the trail, I kind of have a set list of things that I manifest. And then as those things come to fruition, I take them off the list and I add something else. And so there's some things that I have manifested for a year uh, that haven't happened. So it's not like when I manifest something, it happens the next day. Um, and so, but one of the things that uh, I manifest a lot is, um, uh, so I, I, I started manifesting about uh, collaborations that um, I would say I am going to I am manifesting that uh, people will come to me for collaborations and, and business um, deals and, and just trying to expand the things that I'm doing. And so not long after I started that, I got a phone call from the radio station that I used to do a morning show with, but it, it's been several years since we've done the morning show. And basically they wanted, after I manifested that I somebody was going to contact me about uh, a new collaboration, they called, wanted to have lunch. I had no idea what they were wanting to talk about. Went to lunch with them. They wanted to get me back on the morning show and do a collaboration with the radio station and um, Enid Buzz. And so that was a manifestation synchronicity wink from the universe. Uh, another thing, so uh, if you guys have been listening, you know I've uh, been talking about doing some painting. I want to get into doing some painting, some acrylic painting. And so I actually have gone out and I've bought the uh, canvases. I've bought the paint and the brushes. I've got everything ready. I cleaned up my area over there to do the painting. And uh, so I basically had everything ready to go to do some painting. But the one thing I did not have was an easel. And so basically I kind of started looking around for an easel. Um, didn't you know, did I look? No. Okay. Let me, I'm going to take that back. I had not started looking for an easel yet. I had not started looking for one, but in my mind, I knew that I needed an easel. And so, you know, I knew that I was going, so I was aware of the fact that I need an easel. Um, so I get on Facebook one day and as far as I can remember, I've never seen a painter's art easel pop up on Facebook. Uh, but, uh, basically after I got all of my, uh, painting stuff, I was on Facebook and an easel popped up on marketplace. Basically it's the area where people that live in your area sell stuff and then you just meet them and buy stuff locally. And so there was this huge wooden easel used on Facebook. So I click on it and it's a guy I know, a buddy of mine. And so, oh, that reminds me of the bike. Um, hang on, I'm gonna add something here for a little while. Okay, so, um, so I, call, no, I messaged him on Facebook and said, Hey, I'm interested in the easel. I think it was 50. Do I have one here? I don't know, 50 bucks, something like that. Um, so anyway, I said, I'll buy the easel. He said, okay, somebody asked if they could use it this weekend. 
would it be okay if I got it to you next week? And I said, yeah, we'll just meet up and I'll get it from you. So um, didn't wasn't worried about the easel over the weekend. Earlier in the year, we had had a friend here in Enid pass away and he was a photographer and um, he had passed away and they were having an estate sale selling some of his stuff and um, I couldn't get over there to it and like I say he was a photographer had a whole bunch of photography stuff um, but you know I knew him uh, we were good friends on Facebook and um, I was you know sad that he had passed away so anyway back to fast forward I go to meet the guy with the easel and he pulls the easel out and gives it to me and I'm stuffing it in the Jeep and he says, oh, by the way, he said, this easel I bought from an estate sale from the guy who's the photographer that had passed away. So here I was needing an easel and not only was I getting one from a guy that I knew locally, but it had been owned originally by my other friend that was a photographer. So just another weird little synchronicity um, there. Um, let me see, what's the next one on here? Um, basically, uh, it's kind of the turtle one. So sometimes I manifest, sometimes I wonder if when we, when we die, I think when we die, our energy does not die. Our energy goes out there. Now, our vibration, our energy, because we are energy. Uh, everything inside us is moving, and that's where we get the vibration from. And so I wonder when we die, you know, where does our energy go and, and what does it do? And is that kind of us as angels or, or whatever you want to think? And can we communicate with that? So every now and then, um, you know, my mom passed away just a couple of years ago. And so one of the quirky little things that we had was turtles. I was a big um, fan of turtles as a little kid. So I would always ask her to draw me a turtle just so I would have this turtle drawing. And she was always busy and never could get the thing drawn. And so it kind of became a running joke with us, you know, me asking her to to draw a turtle and her never being able to get it done. So that was kind of a turtle as a symbol of something with me and my mom. So one day while out on the uh, walking trail in the winter, towards the end of winter, it was cold. Um, you know, I think I had on a hoodie and, and all that. Um, I was walking and like I say, I manifest pretty much every morning. And so I manifest, I decided I'm gonna manifest and see if I can connect with my mom. And so I said, mom, you know, I'm manifesting that you are going to show me a sign. If, if you're out there, if we can communicate, is there a sign out there? And I said, uh, make it a turtle, show me a turtle. So I was thinking that, you know, at some point there would be a, a little glass turtle did pop up for sale on Facebook and the ad pops up all the time. But I was thinking it'd be something like that. There would be a, a turtle, picture or, or something, but uh, as I'm ending the my run walk on the trail, there's only less than a mile left, um, I'm cruising along the sidewalk and I something catches my eye and I go past it and then I thought, was that what I thought it was? And so I stop and I go back and there is this flattened turtle on the trail. Now, I don't know how it got flattened. I don't know. They had been, they had been working on a drainage thing. So one of those trucks, it may have come off of one of those trucks. They, it may have been, it was, it was cold. The turtle should not have been out. I don't know. I don't know how the turtle got on the trail. It was not alive, but it was a turtle, a smashed dead turtle right there on the trail only minutes after I had asked for a sign from my mom. So uh, take that uh, what you will. So there is another uh, manifestation thing. Um, and then I've got a coincidence on there. You know, if you, if you do believe that there are such things as a coincidence, um, it's got a thing on there about a guy I ran to, into at a hotel that was, uh, had gone to college and roomed with my brother-in-law and, and me and this guy just randomly struck up a conversation. But um, that wasn't really 
a wink from the universe or a synchronicity or a manifestation, but I think that might have been a actual coincidence. So I added it on there. Um, but let's get back to, uh, so pretty much every morning, and this happens quite a bit, is I manifest a unexpected amount of money. And I'll just say, I am manifesting that uh, this week I will receive an amount of money that I was not expecting, a surprise amount of money. And so uh, that was a week that I was supposed to do my um, keynote speech. And so when, when they had originally contacted me about doing the keynote speech, uh, I was told that I would make uh, $1,500. And so I said, yeah, cool, I will do that. And then as it progressed, I got an email from another, from another person at the university, you know, saying, hey, here's some more details about what we want you to do um, for the keynote speech. And just to let you know, we are gonna pay you this year because I had, I've spoke for free as one of the speakers, uh, but this time I was gonna be the keynote. And he said, we are gonna pay you $1,000. And I thought, oh, poop, you know, the other guy said $1,500. But I was like, you know, just getting paid at all, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, my first real paying keynote speech. So, so I'm prepared to get $1,000. So um, I do my uh, keynote speech. Um, they tell me uh, to send in my social security number uh, and W-2 and all that stuff. So I send that in. And uh, then I've been manifesting that I'm going to get a uh, surprise amount of money. So uh, I get my check from the university, and it is not $1,000, and it's not $1,500. It turns out it was $2,000. And so uh, depending on which way you look at it, uh, it was either an extra $500 or an extra $1,000. And so... I had been manifesting a surprise amount of money. Well, bam, there it was. So uh, do with that what you will. Uh, and then my last one that I've got on the website, um, it's, another, it's another money one and, and kind of another collaboration. So again, I manifest that I'm gonna collaborate. Somebody's gonna come out of the blue and wanna do a collaboration or and so I manifest several things, um, and a lot of times it's the same, I don't know, maybe five to ten things, and one of them most of the time is this week or this month or sometime soon I'm going to get a surprise amount of money that I wasn't expecting. And so, um, so that week I get a phone call from a guy that I have collaborated with before, and he calls me and he says, hey, the carnival is in town. And so the year before, he and I had collaborated and done some advertising for the carnival. And, and what we had done was uh, they, were, they paid us an amount of money for everybody that went and bought a bracelet to the carnival and mentioned my company's name. And so I think at the end of it, we had made um, 20, when it was all over, we made $2,400, which he and I split. And so uh, they came back to town and I knew they were in town, but because I hadn't really set up the original one and I was busy, I didn't even think, it just, you know, I didn't even dawn on me to go out and uh, try to do it this year. But uh, out of the blue, this guy, my buddy calls me and he says, hey, you want to collaborate and uh, do the thing with the carnival again? And I said, yeah, sure, if they want to do it. And he says, okay, I'll run out there and ask him. So he goes out there or he emails the guy and he says, hey, do you, would you want to do the same thing uh, at the carnival that we did with, and so my company is Enid Buzz. And he said, would you like to do the same uh, promo as we did last year? And the guy said, yeah, but let's, he goes, instead of having to have my employees keep track of everybody that buys a bracelet and then paying you, I think we were getting $2 a bracelet or something. He said, I'm just going to pay you what I paid you last year. 
And so he just said, I'll pay you guys $2,400. So my buddy calls me up and he says, hey, you just made $1,200, run the ads. And so that was an unexpected surprise amount of money that I didn't do anything for, that I didn't know it was coming. Bam, there it was. And so um, just another one of those uh, surprise amount of money manifestation. So that's basically, and then, and then yesterday, so let me throw this one in, because uh, this is what really set me off. Um, so as some of you guys know, my wife was in a car accident a year ago, April, April, but a year ago. And it was not her fault. She was driving down the highway. A guy veered off because he missed his turn and he veered off right in front of her, basically causing those two to bash into each other. Um, he was okay. My wife's car rolled and flipped and ended up on its top and slid down the highway. And uh, so my wife had to be taken to the emergency room. Um, it uh, fractured her L1 on her spine. And so she had to have some surgeries. She was off work for almost a whole year. And so during that whole time, um, you know, we knew that there was going to be some expenses. And so we just basically uh, contacted an attorney and said, hey, you know, my wife was in this accident. And, I, and she pretty much handled all of it. So I was kind of on the, you know, outside of all this stuff going on. And so she contacted uh, an attorney that was a uh, fraternity brother of her brother that she had known uh, when she was in college. So she called him. He said, yeah, I will take care of it. So uh, my wife was off work. Um, she was racking up some medical bills, some uh, therapy, um, you know, not working. Uh, we had to buy another car. Our car was paid off. We had to buy a car. Um, my wife wanted a safer, nicer one, so uh, we ended up with a car payment, whereas we had not had a car payment uh, at the time of the accident. So it kind of was plodding along, and uh, was all, it was basically a year uh, from the accident, and the attorney contacted my wife and said, well, it's not looking, you know, in, in my mind, you see all these commercials of these uh, attorneys that say, oh, call us, and we'll get you... Uh, the most money, and then you have these uh, testimonials. I got four thousand dollars or four million dollars, and uh, and all this stuff. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh wow, you know, this attorney's going to be able to sue them, and we're going to get you know everything paid plus all this money for um, pain and suffering and and all this. So you know, things are you know going in my head. I have no idea how much it's going to be. No, no, nobody has any clue. And so, um, but then we start hearing from the attorney that, um, his, he only had like $50,000 coverage. Well, come to find out by law, his insurance only has to pay that amount. They, they only have to pay whatever he's covered for. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't sue his insurance company. Um, you can't do anything. You could sue him, but if he doesn't have any money, then you know you can't get anything out. And the only other alternative is for you to sue your own insurance company and have them pay some of the things for. I can't remember what the coverage is that you might have. And so, um, so basically, it kind of starts sounding like you know, basically the amount of money that we're going to get is is just barely going to cover maybe some of the medical expenses and then we're out her salary for the whole year and, uh, and you know, other things. And so, uh, so then I start manifesting. And so in my head, and I don't want to get into all of the numbers um, just because, and at this point, I don't know, uh, but so in my mind, I come up with a number and let me just say it's a six figure number and I start manifesting. We are going to get a check for this six figure number. And just, I pulled it out of my head. I just decided on a figure 
and said, we, you know, even though the attorney's saying it doesn't look like, you know, blah, 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 my wife's like, yeah, we're just going to have to see what happens. And uh, so I start manifesting, uh, like I say, in the morning and I have this amount. And I say this amount, you know, almost every morning. So yesterday I am at a restaurant and I, and so, so we had this account uh, with my bank. So I've got several bank accounts and, th and there was this account that had our savings in it. And unfortunately, because we had two girls in college and my wife wasn't working, uh, basically everything that she had to spend on the girls and bills and everything came out of that savings account. And so it basically drained it to zero. And like a couple of weeks before it had gotten overdrawn and I had to tell my wife, hey, all the money in that savings account is gone. You got to quit spending because it, it was overdrawn. And so, um, so we got it back to just about even uh, where it was like zero, so there was no money there. And so I was at a restaurant this week, well, two days ago, and um, or yesterday, and I decided to get on my app, because I've, I've got two accounts, and sometimes I flip money depending on what I'm paying back and forth, and so sometimes one of the accounts uh, gets a little bit low, and so I just, you know, move money from one to the other. So I just wanted to make sure that the card that I was going to use at the restaurant had some money in it. And if it didn't, I was going to use uh, my second card. So I get on there and I open the bank app and I click on accounts and it shows me the amounts of money I have in all of my accounts. And I happen to glance at that savings account that we had that should have been at about zero. And it has got a large number in it. And I, I, I kind of, my eyes got real big and I was like, whoa. And then there was a big number and then there was a smaller number. So it, you know, the, in the transactions and I was like, wow, that's pretty close to the number I had been manifesting. So, um, so I eat lunch and I go home and come to find out there was a letter and we had been sent, everything had been finalized and we had been sent um, two checks for, uh, you know, from the attorney once his fees were paid and everything. And basically when you add the two checks, like I said, one of them was a large check and one of them was a very small check. But when you add the two checks together, it was only $800 difference than the three figure number that I had been manifesting. So basically we got paid, you know, and that's what I was manifesting was we are going to get a check for this amount of money after the attorney's paid. I mean, that's what we're going to get to put in our account. And so we got that amount of money to put in our account, the amount that I had manifested. So you go figure whether manifesting works or not. I don't know. I think it works, so I'm going to keep manifesting. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so some prior things that I had manifested and that I wanted to just, and I'll go over these, you know, kind of quick. But so the first thing, the first time, I, I didn't know anything about manifesting. Um, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, and was in college and high school in the 80s and it was kind of before the internet and before uh, Google and you, you know it was just before you knew all of this stuff that, that, that was out there that there was books being written on all this stuff but I know that when I was in college I was in a class it was an advertising class and what they did was they they split the class into two teams and each team so then they would bring somebody in and so the first I think the first company they brought in was Dairy Queen, our local Dairy Queen. And they said, okay, Dairy Queen is having a problem and they want you guys to help them come up with a promotion and a campaign to help them out and to increase business. And so each group came up with their own ideas, their own design and everything. And so then we had to 
have a presentation where we went in and uh, we presented our ideas and our artwork and everything to the company. And then the company, uh, maybe it was three, I can't, maybe it was three groups. It was, I think it might've been three groups. The, the class was split into three groups. And so, um, so then you would present and then the uh, people from the company, so this would have been the people from Dairy Queen, they would bring in a couple of people and then they would kind of vote and tell who won. And then the winner uh, actually got some cash. All the members of the winning team got some cash. And so, so we did that and it was, I think it was, so basically it was for the first half of the semester was one company and then the second half of the semester uh, it was going to be for the local chamber of commerce in the town that the university was in. And so on the first competition, uh, my team, not really my team, but our team came in last. We came in third out of three. And so I was like mad. Um, and so when we were preparing for the second competition, which was for the um, chamber, you know, I really made sure that everybody in my group did way more than what they had done on the first competition. You know, I had them doing, and so I kind of took control. I kind of was like the leader. I was like, look, you guys need to do this. We need to have this. We need to have that. We need to have this. And so uh, we got all our stuff together and it was the day of the presentation. And this is the first time that I had ever done this. And I can't remember, I had seen a maybe I'd heard on an Oprah episode or I'd seen a, listen to a cassette or something, but I, I had heard about mindset and manifesting. And so before we went in to present, I started manifesting and I said, you know, I was telling myself, I'm going to go in and I'm going to blow the socks off these people and we are going to win this competition. We're going to come in first. It's going to be the, the best presentation that they hear. I'm going to be the best presenter out of everybody, out of my group, out of all the groups that they're going to have. So I went in there uh, with tons of confidence because I had manifested this, went in there, we did our presentation, and yes, we did win the second competition, got some money. Um, and so that was my first, the first time that I had ever kind of delved into manifesting um, and getting a result out of it. So um, here is a uh, wink from the universe, kind of a synchronicity. If you guys haven't heard of how I got my job here in Enid. So I was raised in Enid, I went to Enid High School and then I left. I went to college out of town and I ended up with a job in Oklahoma City. And so while I was down there working in Oklahoma City for several years, I was working for a, a company that printed ads for um, retail and grocery stores and I was in the layout department and then I started dating a girl in the layout department and we decided that we were going to get married. Well, they had a rule that two people that were married could not work in the same department and there was really no other department for me or her to go to and so I told her, I said, you stay, I'll go find another job and we were living in Moore, Oklahoma at the time and um, so, but one of our clients that would come down and proof their ad that we were putting together was a lady from Enid, Oklahoma. Now, you know, Enid was my hometown and I thought it was kind of cool that, and there was actually two companies from Enid that we did their ads. We laid them out and printed them and, and then shipped them back up to Enid. And so I had gotten to know um, the lady from one of the companies because she would come down personally and proof the ad. And so, so I knew her, but anyway, so back to finding a job. So I decided, and this was just, you know, a random, random time. I mean, I knew it was going to, it was months before we were going to get married. So I still had time. Um, but just on, on a weekend, I decided, I'm going to look in the Oklahoma City newspaper for a job in Oklahoma City and uh, then I will leave the company that, I, that we were at and she was going to stay there and then I was going to go work for another company and we were going to continue living in more. So I open up the paper that Sunday and there is an ad for an advertising director job in Enid, Oklahoma. And I was like, oh wow. What, 
how cool would that be to move back to Enid, Oklahoma? Because most, a lot of my friends were still in Enid, my mom was still in Enid, my family was still in Enid, and uh, I, I had tried to get a job in Enid and couldn't, just couldn't find one, and that's why I ended up in Oklahoma City. Uh, and so this was for an advertising um, director's job. Well, all I had been was a graphic designer, but I decided to go for it. I thought, what the heck, you know, I'll just apply, I'll figure it out if I get the job. Whatever I have to do, I'll figure it out. Um, but the company name was what was J.S. Gregory. Well, it was a company that I had never heard. Um, and so I did, I think I did a search, and again, this is before Google and all that stuff. I think I looked in the phone book uh, in Enid and I could not find a company called J.S. Gregory. So I had no idea what the company was, what I would be doing, who I'd be working for, any of that. But anyway, I put my resume together and I mailed it and uh, didn't really think about it. Um, there wasn't really any other jobs that I had found at that point that I had applied for or anything. So uh, I was just kind of hanging out and I got a phone call one day and this lady on the phone said, hey, Curtis. And I said, hi. And she goes, this is Betty Evans uh, with Evans Drug up in Enid, Oklahoma. And I said, oh, hi, how are you? And she said, good. She goes, uh, did you know that that company, J.S. Gregory, that you applied for was actually Evans Drug and we were just running a blind ad? And I said, no. I said, I had no idea. And so she knew me because she had been coming down to the printing company and knew that I worked there. And so she thought, well, he knows how to lay out the ads because he's doing our ads. So she said, would you want to come up to Enid and apply for the job? So I drove up to Enid, applied for the job, got the job, got married, moved to Enid, became the advertising director for Evans Drug, worked there for seven years, ended up getting divorced, then a year later ended up marrying my boss's daughter, who's now my wife, who I've been married to for 25 years. And so, synchronicity. Had Betty Evans not been coming down to proof those ads, had I not looked in the newspaper that day and seen that blind ad for a job in Enid and applied for it. I mean, so that's how my wife and I met. That's how I ended up back in Enid. That's how I ended up you know, basically right here. Uh, that was another synchronicity. Um, well, even going out with, uh, so, so when I, so here's a, uh, another synchronicity on going out with my wife. So, uh, moved up to Enid, was married seven years. My wife and I decided to get divorced. And, uh, so we split up. So I was still working for Evans and, um, it had been about a year since I'd been divorced and, and I was wanting to go out on some dates. And so I was like, in the meantime, my boss's daughter had moved back to Enid. She had been gone and she moved back to Enid and she was working in the company. And, uh, so I, I knew that, you know, I knew her cause she was working, you know, for the company and I knew she was single. And so, but there was two other girls that I had been running into. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, I've got these three girls that I could possibly, that are single that I could possibly ask out that I would want to ask out. And so, but I couldn't really, I didn't really know, you know, which one I wanted to go out with. So one night um, we were going to this club bar uh, hotel bar that we always went to. We were going to go to it this Friday night and uh, it was the gal that owned it and she was the main bartender. It was her birthday and so they were going to have a birthday party for her. So I decided, well, I'm going to go buy Evan's Drug where I worked and buy a greeting card, a birthday card to take to her for her birthday. So I go to Evan's to buy the birthday card. It just so happens that Denise was the manager was on duty that night and she just happened to check me out because all of the cashiers were doing other things. So she checks me out to buy that birthday card and just out of the blue, I say, well, we're going out tonight. We're gonna go to this bar called the Frisco and have some beers. And then after that, we're gonna go to this other bar and go to this birthday party for 
this lady that I'm getting the card for. If you would like to go, show up and we'll be there. And she was like, no, I'm tired. And, and she hadn't been doing anything. She had moved back to Enid and didn't really know anybody and was not going out, uh, did not want to go out. She wanted to go home and, and all that. So I said, okay. So I go to the Frisco and I'm there for a little while and the door opens. And most of the time it was one of those bars where if you were a regular, you went in the back door because people that came in the front door were usually newbies and you always got stared at if you came in the front door. So the door opens, everybody looks to see who it is and it's her. And I basically leaned over my friend and I said, wow, she showed. So she showed up, we had some beer, she went to the other party with me. We started dating, uh, ended up marrying her. So that was the synchronicity for meeting my wife. Um, getting to interview Garth Brooks um, so I've been, I had been doing Enid Buzz, which is a, a media company here in town where I provide information and things to the people of Enid, but I also like to kind of get out of Enid and go to other towns and bring stuff back and just kind of make it a little more exciting. And so because I was media and bringing people the news, the local venue here in Enid, which put on concerts, would let me come take photographs and do stories at their concerts. So I got to take photographs of Reba McIntyre and uh, Alan Jackson and Willie Nelson and Styx and Beach Boys and REO Speedwagon and uh, Ted Nugent, you know, just all these different bands. And so I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And I thought, you know, I ought to contact the venues in Tulsa and Oklahoma City and get on their lists and then maybe one day I can apply to go to one of their concerts and take photographs of even bigger groups. So I sent in a request to be on the media emailing list for the BOK Center, the biggest venue in Tulsa. And um, I get an email back a couple days later that says, you know, we've got you on the list. We will send you stuff. So basically anytime a big concert, there was a big press release for a big concert, I would get the email because I was press. And out of the blue one day, I get an email and it says, Garth Brooks is coming out of retirement and is going to go on a new nation or a world tour. And he's going to kick off his world tour in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Would you like to come to the press conference? And I'm like, Ooh, yeah. So here I am, this little know-nothing media company here in Enid, Oklahoma, and uh, I got invited to go to Garth Brooks' press conference in Tulsa announcing his new tour. So uh, I talked to a couple of my buddies, and I'm like, look, I get to go um, you know, to the Garth Brooks press conference. Do you guys want to go with me? So I got a couple of guys that were going to go with me, and uh, have video and photographs, and we we're going to take a lot of video and photographs. And then a few days before that was to happen, I get another email, and it says, okay, Garth is going to give interviews, but they're going to have to be short, and he's not sure how many he can do, but if you would like to be on the list to interview Garth Brooks, let me know. And I was like, sure. Now, I have never interviewed, at that point, I had never interviewed like a celebrity or anybody big, you know, I, I had talked to some people in town and the, you know, like the mayor and, and just done some little piddly iPhone interviews, but I'd never interviewed somebody big. And so, but I said, yes. And so I got all my buddies to get all of their camera equipment and all of everything. I mean like big cameras and everything. So, um, so we go to Tulsa, um, we cover the press conference and basically they say, okay, anybody that wants, to interview Garth Brooks, you know, get in this line. And so I got in the line and sure enough, I get up there and I got to do about a five minute interview with Garth Brooks and um, the rest is history. And so again, just because I sent an email wanting to take photographs. Oh, and then I got an invite to his first concert and they, I got free tickets if I would review the concert. So 
we went back the next weekend to his concert, which was like the coolest concert I've probably ever been to. I think it lasted like three hours. He just, he just didn't want to stop. So it was the coolest thing ever. Again, another little synchronicity there. Um, oh gosh, I, I've just, there's just so many. I've got so many. Um, getting my banana seat bike, um, the, the exact, not, not, my exact one, but in, an exact copy of the one I had as a kid, um, finding it. I'd never seen a picture of it. I've, I'd searched, I'd looked, I'd try to find the name of it, who made it. I knew I'd bought it from a, a store called Otasco, but other than that, I didn't know anything about it. My mom had gotten it for me and uh, I had searched everything, antique shops and old ads and Google and all this. And then one day I was on Facebook and I was scrolling along and this banana seat bike came by and every now and then I would look at banana seat bikes thinking I ought to buy one and restore it and just have a cool banana seat bike in my studio. And so it kind of caught my attention. So I scrolled back up to it and I thought, well, that might be a cool bike to buy and have in my studio. But then I, I got to looking at it closer and my bike had been this multicolored bike where they had sprayed like purple into blue into orange into red into purple and the seat was a banana seat but it was and it was kind of plastic but it the design on the plastic was denim and i got to looking at the picture and sure enough that bike on marketplace on facebook was the exact bike i had when i was a kid so I look to see who's selling it, and it's a guy here in Enid that I know that's literally two blocks from where I'm sitting right now. And so I messaged him and I said, I'll buy the bike. That's the exact bike I had as a kid. Can I come get it? And he said, come on over. So I walked over to his house, got the bike. That's the exact bike I had when I was a kid that I didn't even know what the name of was. So now it's in my garage and I've got it. So another synchronicity. Yeah. Um, the story of getting our dog, Graham, uh, that's on the website. That's kind of a cool synchronicity. Um, and then the last one I'm going to leave you with real quick, just, uh, just to, uh, throw it out there. I may have talked about this before, but, um, so here in Oklahoma, uh, the pioneer woman, one of the biggest bloggers. Now she's a big, cook recipe movie star not movie star but tv star she's got her own tv show the pioneer woman well she lives and got famous uh being here on a ranch in pahuska oklahoma so she has built up this big mercantile in pahuska and then she opened up a restaurant and then she opened up a pizza restaurant and then she opened up an ice cream parlor and then she opened up a boarding house which is basically a hotel and um, it's got six rooms in it and it is booked all the time. It's almost impossible. It's virtually impossible to get a, at this, at the point that I was looking, now they've gone out further. So if you looked at their calendar, it only went out about two or three months and then it just stopped. It just didn't, now the calendar goes out further. So if you wanna book a room, you can actually get a room, but it's gonna be about four to six months before you can find an opening, which is fine. If you know when you're gonna go, that's fine. But at the point that I was looking, there was just no rooms ever available. There was never a room available because, you know, the, the three, let's, I think it was like maybe three months out, all three months were always booked. And then when you got to the fourth month, it just, you just couldn't, there was no rooms available because they just hadn't gone out that far. And so what I found out was, that the only way to get a room in this boarding house was if somebody canceled and if they canceled, the only way to know it was it would pop up on the calendar. They, they, don't, they wouldn't notify anybody, um, and there was no notifications. They just they had so many people, they were like, well, we can't tell you. So basically what it, what it turned out to be was a competition to whenever a room would pop open because of a cancellation, whoever booked it the quickest got the room. And I mean, you had to be on it quick. And so what I did was I opened up some tabs on my browsers and for, I don't know, six to eight months, 
probably every few days I would get on there and I would hit refresh and I would just hit refresh and see if any dates popped up and you know there was never any dates popping up so I would just I would keep hitting refresh and then you know sometimes I'd get busy and you know three or four days would go by and I wouldn't check and then I would start checking again and so um, just was not getting a room I was going to surprise my wife and so and I was always doing this on my computer here right here in my studio because I had the tabs open to the boarding house and, and, and like I said, there were six rooms and there was one room in particular that I thought would be the coolest. It was, it's kind of one of the bigger rooms, faces kind of the downtown area, um, just one of the cooler rooms. And so I remember one day I was in the kitchen in the house and I was feeding the dog and I thought to myself, you know, I haven't checked for an available room at the Pioneer Woman boarding house in a while. So just for fun, I got on my phone and I went to the calendar and I checked and there was three rooms open, two, two, I think it was three rooms open for an upcoming weekend. I think it was like maybe a month away or three weeks or, or something like that. But it, it was just, it was in the future, but it was on a weekend and it was just one night. It was, I think it was like a Friday, a Friday night, um, just the one night, but there was three rooms. And so I couldn't believe it. Well, I didn't have everything set up in my phone on the browser where like I could click right there and my credit card information would pop up. I was going to have to enter everything and it seems like it was going to take forever. And I'm telling you, this was a, this is a competition when a room pops open. So I ran out here to my studio, got on the computer. I was thinking there might have been a glitch on my phone that made it work, but I, I looked online and sure enough, by the time I got out here, there was still three rooms available. One of the three was the room that I wanted. So I booked it really quick, got it booked. And, uh, and so then we, we went and stayed. And so, um, so I guess the synchronicity there was the fact that just out of the blue, I decided to check on my phone. I mean, had I, and I had, I waited 15 more minutes, I wouldn't have got the room. They would have been booked. But the cool thing was the weekend that opened up, we found out that it was a girl's weekend that all these girls had planned together and it got canceled. And there were so many of the girls, it was going to take three rooms for all of them to have a place to stay. Well, once they canceled, it opened up three rooms at the same time. Well, it just so happened, and, and I didn't get to pick the weekend because it was just literally the only weekend that had a room available, but it just happened to be a good weekend for me and my wife. So, but it also happened to be the weekend that they were reopening their restaurant. They had remodeled the whole thing. So we got to go, and the th cool thing about staying at the boarding house is they, and, and so trying to eat at the restaurant is like an hour wait, minimum hour wait. There's always a long line to get into the restaurant. The cool thing about staying at the boarding house is you got to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You could tell them whatever time you wanted to eat and they would get you right in. They would reserve the room for you. If you weren't staying at the boarding house, you couldn't, you couldn't make a reservation. You had to, you literally had to stand in line for an hour to get into the restaurant. So we got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and breakfast the next day at the restaurant and didn't have to stand in line. The even cooler thing was because it was the weekend of their grand opening of the remodel of the restaurant, um, Reed Drummond was there. And so she was walking around the night that we ate there. We just happened to be there at the time that she came to the restaurant to greet some of the people that were there. So we got to talk to her, got a picture with her, all kinds of fun stuff another synchronicity right there. So anyway, all of this to say, if you guys are out there and you're not manifesting, uh, please start manifesting, start reading up on it. Again, maybe the reason that these manifestations are working for me is because I believe them. I put myself into the positions to make them happen. I don't know. I don't know what's causing them, but um, I'm getting lots of winks from the universe. I'm getting lots of these cool synchronicities. Um, I'm getting lots of these manifestations of things uh, coming true. 
I've got a whole list of, of uh, about five other things that I've been manifesting. And uh, when they happen, I will let you guys know. And they're, they're kind of big things. Um, you know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll just see what happens. So if you guys do some manifesting, if you guys have a synchronicity, like a super cool synchronicity that's happened to you, uh, email it to me at uh, shags at shaggyduck.com or curtis at curtistucker.com. Let me know. I would love to hear your stories. If you have any tips on manifesting or uh, any of this stuff, let me know. Uh, if you if you kind of believe in the whole vibration thing, let me know about that. I would just love to hear from you guys. If you guys have some episode ideas, please let me know. I need more episode ideas. Uh, but I would love to do episodes on things that you guys want to hear about. You know, is it... Um, the internet or health or longevity or staying fit or these weird things like this. I mean, what, what are subjects, topics that you guys would like to hear? You guys let me know. So don't forget to subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker or at Curtis Tucker. Um, subscribe to the podcast. It is on uh, Buzzsprout, but you can also uh, catch it on Apple and most of the other podcasting platforms. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for checking in. Hopefully I find something super exciting uh, for next week episode. It might be the one to have to do with Survivor because I just finished my Survivor video and I should be sending that tonight or tomorrow. Uh, so I'll let you go. I'll keep you guys updated. Don't think I'm not manifesting that I'm going to be on the next season of Survivor because I am. So we'll see what happens there. You guys have a great evening. I will talk to you guys soon. See ya.